All right, we're going to continue our adventure into two-dimensional domains. And as always, we'll start with Laplace's equation, then do Poisson's equation, which we skip for now, and then we move on to heat and wave equations. But as you know, when you separate variables on those, you end up with a Laplace eigenvalue on the domain. So as a warm-up to the heat and the wave equation, or actually, these equations are, stand on their own. They're very important in their own right. Maybe because they come from wave and heat equations, maybe. But I kind of think of them as interesting in their own right. And as you recall, the eigenvalues are very much related to the frequencies that we would hear if this was a musical membrane, a drum. So in one dimensional case, we had a string. Now we have a two-dimensional domain, so we have to call it a drum because you can't call it a string anymore. And I'll just remind you what we discovered in the one-dimensional case. It was the same equation, but then we were left pretty much with an ODE whose solution was sines and cosines. And because we're working on all of this with zero boundary conditions, u on the boundary equals zero. And we got those sines and cosines. We had to reject cosines because cosines didn't equal zero at zero. We're going from zero to L and from zero to H. So we had to reject the cosines. And more than that, the, so the coefficient, it was sine of AX. A had to be just the right quantized value so that those signs landed at zero at the other boundary. And what we discovered is that it was a very nice integer progression, which explained why, mu why string musical instruments sound so nice and coherent. Because the tonal sequence is an integer sequence. And so we hear the fundamental tone, the next overtone, which is an octave above, then the next one, which is a third above, and so forth. That beautiful, is it also called a harmonic series? I think so, but in a totally different sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's not what we mathematicians call the harmonic series. Okay. So, let's discover what a drum would sound like. And for that, we only have to solve this equation. And I believe that the frequencies, if we retrace the steps of how this came from the wave equation, the frequencies are the square roots of these lambdas. So lambdas represent the frequencies squared. So the eigenvalues are the frequencies squared. Okay, so let's see what we get. So we're on a rectangle. So what, co what coordinate system would it be natural to use here? Cartesian. <laughs> so yes, I, 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 he I heard the Russian joke. Uh, Cartesian. Okay, so we're going to use Cartesian coordinates. So let's use Cartesian coordinates. So I have to take a step back and, and correct one of the things that I said. The frequencies that we would hear would not be the square roots of lambdas, because if you recall, those square lambdas were negative. What's the eigenvalue corresponding to sine? Sine 5x minus 25. So lambdas turn out to be negative. Lambdas will turn out to be negative here. And in all cases, lambdas will be negative for reasons that we'll discover in the linear algebra class on Tuesdays. So that's why sometimes you write this equation with a minus sign in front of the lambda, which we'll do if we, if we get to the circle, we'll write minus lambda, so that lambdas have a chance to be positive. Another interpretation of putting a minus sign here is to basically consider minus the Laplacian instead of the Laplacian. That also has very good reason to do. There's a very good reason to consider minus the Laplacian. Once again, it's a reason that we'll discover on Tuesday in the linear algebra class. Okay, so we need to solve this system with zero boundary conditions. What technique are we going to use? A function of two variables? Separation of variables. Why, why does it have a chance? Well, in order to really understand why it has a chance, you have to see a couple of examples where it doesn't have a chance. And then looking back on this example, you realize that it has a chance because it's such a nice and symmetric domain. If this was a trapezoid or a parallelogram, it would be a lot harder to do by separation of variables. 
I think parallelogram will still work because I can think of skewed co of a skewed coordinate system known as affine coordinates, and it'll be great. I think I'm not sure because there will be cross terms in the Laplacian. There will be u sub x y in the Laplacian. So that's actually interesting. Can you solve the problem on a parallelogram by separation of variables? I sense homework. But on the trapezoid, I don't think so. I don't think it would be. Well, now I'm thinking. OK, I'll think about it later. OK, but for now, we're definitely going for separation of variables. And we'll have a function capital X. That's a function of X alone. And a function capital Y, excuse me, that's a function of Y alone. And I will now take this and plug it in here. And let's just skip to the two steps forward. What we're going to find here will be x double prime y. What we'll find here is x y double prime. And what we'll find here is x y. So when we divide both sides by x y, as we always do, we end up with So we haven't actually separated the variables. To separate them, y double prime needs to come over here. This depends only on x. I'm going through this quickly because I don't know how many times we've done this already. This depends only on y. So both must equal a constant. And I know because I'm, I know where this is going. This is just going to be this, the equation we've seen a million times before. So it needs to be a negative constant. So I will call it minus a squared. Okay, so let's deal with the x equation first, which reads x double prime equals minus a squared x. Something that we've seen a million times before. What are the solutions to this equation? Sine and cosine. But because we're going from, from 0 to L, we have to reject the cosines because we're looking at zero boundary conditions. So, so it's going to be, and it's the kind of sign that needs to land back at zero at x equals L. We're going from zero to L. So A needs to be an integer multiple of pi over L. Let me write it down and then you'll see that it works. n pi over L. So imagine n pi over L here, and then plug in x equals L. The L's will cancel, and you'll be left with n pi. So indeed, we're landing at 0 every time x hits L, which is exactly what we want. So this is the quantization in the x direction. And so you might say, well, we're getting pretty nice eigenvalues just like we did in the one-dimensional case. But you have to remember, these are not the eigenvalues. That's just something intermediate. The eigenvalues are the lambdas, right? So we don't see the eigenvalues yet. We're just building them right now. OK? OK. So that completes the x part. Now let me, let's deal with this part where we find out that, let's be careful, y double prime over y, bring that here, bring equals lambda plus a squared. And this too needs to be a negative number. So I will, call, I will give it a name, minus b squared. And so we end up with same equation with a different constant. So the solution is exactly right. So that's the quantization. So there is, so the y direction has its own quantization. One is determined by L, the other one is determined by H. And in the rest, they're pretty similar. So it's now time to write down the answer. So you will see that we're basically ending up with a double indexed family of functions. I cannot capture them with a single index now, but that's okay. That's my eigenfunction. And the corresponding eigenvalue is lambda, 
which equals minus a squared minus b squared. There you go. We have solved the Laplace eigenvalue problem on an arbitrary rectangle with zero boundary conditions. Yeah, from here, you're totally right. Now, could this at all sound like a musical instrument? Is there maybe a harmonic series hidden in here? Yeah, you know, if one of these wasn't here, then it's a perfect harmonic series, right? Because remember, the frequencies are the square roots of minus this. So if one of these wasn't here, this would be just an integer progression. But with both of them here, an N and M always start at 1, not at 0. 0 is not part of the solution because it would just be 0. We're looking for non-zero functions, right? There isn't anything like a, anything that sounds like a string at all. So this never sounds like music. The only way this could possibly sound like music is if it was a very, very long drum. So if you take a very, very long drum, we, could, we should do that experiment. Then you can say that this is, at least for small values of n, this is close to zero, right? So maybe we will only, maybe this term will dominate to the point where we'll, it'll sound like a musical instrument. So if we take a drum that's as long as this room and about yay wide, maybe it'll just sound like a string of this length, actually. We could try that. That's what the math is kind of telling us if you believe that the wave equation describes the problem. Do we not lose anything? So I'll interpret it as two questions. Number one, when we approach this eigenvalue problem, we said, let's look for solutions in this form where variables separate. Let's look for solutions that can be represented as a function of x times a function of y. And we found infinitely many of those solutions. But who is to say that all solutions can be written in this form? Maybe there are some solutions that cannot be written in this form. That's perfectly valid. It's, it's a mathematician's job to prove. You know, usually I say proofs in some circumstances, when they focus on a technicality, are a distraction. In this case, it would not be a distraction. In this case, it's a matter of mathematical responsibility to show that this captures all possible solutions and there cannot be any more. And that certainly was a question for some time and it was definitively answered that yes, all solutions have this form. That's number one. Number two, are we missing something? So once we've restricted our attention to this form and it broke up into two ODEs and we have to satisfy these two boundary conditions, I don't think there's anything that we're missing if that's the sense in which you were asking. All right, I'll see you guys.